okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next story. Now, our next story was actually a request from Joshua from YouTube, and it is one of the ones that I have found the most intriguing on the Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. Just the idea I've always found interesting. Medieval found footage. The phrase itself is very evocative because it makes you think of one of two things. Well, three. One, it's fake. It's totally made up. Just It's just three words strung together. But that's boring. People always go, what? That's just fake. And I'm like, yeah, probably. But that's not a fun podcast. To just be like, ah, it's fake. Like, either it's fake for a reason, or you go, it's fake, but let's pretend it's not for a second. So it is possibly just three words strung together. However, this one has a bit of meat to it. So it's one of three things. It's either fake. It involves time travel, which is a nice theory, which is nice. It's evocative. And then there's one that I think is more accurate. And, and it's pretty, pretty cool. So we've already addressed what may, maybe it's fake. Maybe it's something people put together. Whatever. I don't like, you know, maybe, but that's boring. Time travel. The idea of time travel, I think, kind of touches people on a personal level because it it addresses two things. It addresses changing the past because everyone has regrets. Time travel touches on the idea that we can change our past. And two, I think a lot of people don't necessarily wish they could live forever. But for me, I want to see what comes next. I personally think it would be more fascinating to travel into the future. To see what happens next. And time travel plays on both of those. Like I could fall asleep and wake up a thousand years from now. And be like oh my god this is awesome. There's like robots or apocalyptic wasteland. Everyone's dead and I'm just kind of stumbling around. Until I fall and my glasses break. And I go all the books in the world. That's the interesting thing about time travel. It, it kind of plays on both of those things. So let's address the time travel theory first. And that would be that some archaeologists go are like digging around in England. They like got their shovels and the cops are like, oi, 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 you don't have a permit. And they're like, ah, whatever. We're archaeologists throwing dirt in the cop's face. They keep digging. The cops are trying to arrest them. Ha- the, not the hammer. The shovel goes, tink, tink. Hits something and the cops are like, what's that? Archaeologist goes, it looks like some sort of film case. Dust it off. You pull it out and it's a reel of film. And they're like, hmm, do you have a projector? The cops are like, no, we're cops. Like, we don't even have guns over here. Why would you think we'd have a projector? Eventually, though, the archaeologists pay their bail. They go to a local cinema, put the film on the projector, and what they see is literal found footage. They see film of these arch- of these medieval people kind of dancing around, doing their stuff, making clay pots, looking miserable all the time. Knights are beating them up. They're all dying. Every Every movie ends with them dying of the bubonic plague. The end. And the archaeologists are like, this is impossible. Like, it's encased in this metal tin. It's shot on this camera that we are actually able to string up to a projector. Maybe it's on, like, Super IMAX film. Maybe it's digital film from the future. But it's found footage. And the idea would be that at some point, somebody traveled back in time to the medieval period, filmed them doing their things... Maybe they're hamming it up for the camera. Maybe it's a little Punch and Judy show. Maybe, maybe they were videotaping something and the time travelers dressed up as medieval people walking around with their hidden camera. They're seeing this young boy writing, writing stuff. And they're like, hey, what are you writing? He's like, I'm a writing stuff. And they're like, well, that's obvious that you're writing stuff. What are you writing? He's like, oh, nothing. I just have stories in my head sometime. I call this one Romeo and Juliet. And they're like, oh. Your name doesn't happen to be William Shakespeare. He's like, they call me Billy. That's in the found footage. And obviously, apparently it has audio as well. But anyway, so they find this footage. And for whatever reason, they leave it behind. For us to find. Because if it was just time travelers going back in time, filming a bunch of dudes dancing around. And then, and Billy Shakespeare. And then went to the future, we wouldn't know it was there. So, that theory is completely ridiculous, obviously. And not because I don't believe in time travel, because I do. To a sense, but this would require, one, time travelers to travel back to medieval times. Two, to time travel back to medieval times 
and use technology that we would be able to view. We can't even view right... I, if someone gave me a laser disc right now, I'd be SOL. Like, I'd be like, hey, thanks. <laughs> what am I going to do with this? It's a giant coaster. I can't even view laser disc technology. By the time we have time machines going back and forth in time, they're not going to be using SD cards. They're not even going to be using film. What would they use? It would be the same thing. Yeah, actually, if I had a cell phone, if I went back in time and I left my cell phone in the 1980s and I pulled down my SD card, they'd be like, well, okay, your fingernail fell off, robot man. Like, they'd have no way of even knowing what was on it. So, that theory, while it is interesting because it's sci-fi-ish, it's not very likely at all. And I don't think that's what medieval found footage refers to. I've seen that theory bandied around a couple times. They're like, oh, it's about time travelers going back in time. I don't really think that it is what it refers to. But I do think the theory has some meat. And I think this version is more interesting because it's quite possibly true. Let's say the year is 1568. A couple peasants running around in the field. I Apparently in my version of medieval times, they just dance and run. And don't do any work. But it was actually quite grueling. They worked from sundown to sunup. Or the other way around. That would They would be working in the night. They worked from sunup to sundown. And then they sit at home in front of the fireplace. And trying to forget their miserable existence. So. But anyways. In my version. They're just running around through the fields. They're like. Gerald. Gerald. Get back. Do your chores. And he's like. No way. I'm out of here. He's 15. Whatever year I said before. I don't even remember at this point. And these peasants were playing in the woods. And this night. I don't know what that sound effect was. This knight rides up to the peasants and is like, the king requires your service, peasants. And they're like, oh yeah, whatever you say, knight. What are we supposed to do? And the knight's like, the king is making a movie. The peasants be like, what? <laughs> What's a movie? And the knight's like, I don't know. You know how hard it is to shrug in armor, but I'm going to do it anyways. I don't know. The horse is like, I don't know. They all go back to the castle. Now, we know the history of film. It's very, very well documented. Partially because film is a document in and of itself. It's a chemical process. And I'm not going to bore you with the details of it. Because it's easily, you can find it on Wikipedia. Again, all the links are below. But we can trace it back quite a while. And before we were capturing... Because really, I say I'm not going to bore you with the process. But all film is, is a series of pictures. And there's, it's weird, on film, I don't know if it's the same with digital, but on film there's a black bar between each frame. But our brain doesn't pick up the black bar because we have this thing called like continuity of image. And it's weird now because think about it, when you sit down and you watch a film, you're actually seeing a black image. Oh, what is it, 32 frames per second? So you're seeing a black image 32 times every second and your brain just doesn't process it. And what's weird is I'm sure some people's brains do. I'm sure there are some people whose brains don't work right. And it must be maddening to have to watch a movie. Because they'd be like, oh my god, people like this? Like, I'm just seeing a bunch of black every once in a while. Normal people don't see it. But anyway, so all it is is a series of photographs. Played very, very rapidly. Same thing with like, uh, you guys know what film is. So, between film, we can go all the way back. Thousands, probably about a thousand years, if not farther. To something called the camera obscura. And that was film without film. It was only what was going on outside. And that was basically a black room with a peephole. Not like a pervert's peephole. But a peephole that allowed sunlight to come in. And the image was like reversed on the wall. It got, it got real complicated for me to follow on this stuff. But that allowed you that if you sat in this dark room. Through this looking against the wall. You could see what was going on outside. Now, obviously, you could just leave the dark room and see what was going on outside. But it was an early form of a projected image. People say that cave paintings on walls could have been brought from some sort of camera obscura. That religious practices could have involved the camera obscura thousands of years ago. Could have been the way to tell stories of myths and legends by basically creating this type of room... And having people acting it out. And then it's like appears on the wall. So the camera obscura. Leonardo da Vinci used one. A bunch of other old people used one. I think Leonardo da Vinci was the one who actually like made it popular. He, he made it fetch. Like he, he created the mainstream version of it. And then in 1827. That's when some guy says. You know what? I'm going to use that same process. 
but I'm going to take a piece of polished pewter plate with Peter Peckle. It's going to help him with this. A polished pewter plate. And he covered it with something called Bitmen of Judea. The sunlight hits the plate using the same thing as the camera obscura. And after eight hours, he's able to wipe off everything that the sun didn't burn in. This is a weird process. And then he has an image on a plate of what was outside. That is the first, like, here is a here's an image. You didn't have to be here to see this. Here is this image. Now, the limitation, obviously, was that it took eight hours. So they didn't have any pictures of people back then. So you go, Jason. You said, you know, camera obscuras existed for a long time. And then in 1827 is the first time we have a photograph. And a photograph is a stepping stone to a film. So how do you equate that with the medieval times? Well, to do that, I'm actually going to talk about another recommendation I got. A while back, I got an email from a gentleman named Gary. And we were talking about Terrer, the guy who could eat anything, which I love that episode. He ate a gold fork, and the gold fork <laughs> never came out. And so the idea is, is that he dissolved it. And Gary emailed me, and he sent me a link to something called Aqua Regia. Now, Aqua Regia was a chemical... It was a chemical combination that could be used to dissolve gold and platinum. And completely dissolve it. So, Aqua Regia was this chemical that was made. And you're like, okay, that's a cute story, but what does that have to do with anything you're talking about? It was first mentioned in 1300 AD. And then in 1600 AD, the next time we see a reference to this, it was written out not as a chemical composition or how the chemicals work together. It was instead a riddle. It was a drawing that explained this advanced chemical process as as an image. And the process said, the process showed a dragon and then a fox eating a rooster, and the rooster eating the fox. And then this is how they deciphered this. It said, the rooster symbolizes gold, and the fox represents aqua regia. Obviously, there was some sort of key code. Some guy just wasn't looking at it and going, oh, yeah, that's what that means. But the repetitive dissolving, heating, and redissolving, the rooster eating the fox, eating the rooster, leads to the buildup of chlorine gas in the flask. The gold then crystallizes in the form of gold chloride, whose red crystals were known as dragon's blood. So you had the initial recipe of what it does in 1300 AD. You then have this coded drawing in 1600 AD. The reaction was not listed in chemical literature at all until 1890. So in that time period, people had invented the process or discovered the process in 1300. It was referenced again 300 years later. And then it took another two what is it? Yeah, it took almost another 300 years before anyone ever wrote it down again. But it was still being practiced. And in that time period, if those original documents were destroyed for whatever reason, it would have been lost until it was quote-unquote discovered in 1890. So who's not to say that the film... All film is is a chemical process involving light and material and a chemical. Dark rooms and stuff like that. You're mixing these chemicals together... You take an image onto a piece of material. There's not magic. Now, I get it, the magic of the cinema and all that stuff. It's great. It's silver screen, all that nonsense. But it's not actual magic. It is a chemical process. Who's not to say that the chemical process wasn't discovered in 1827, but it was discovered before then? The proof we have that it was discovered is gone. Is that a supposition? Absolutely. Do I have any proof of that? No. I can look at these other things that were lost and then rediscovered. I can say, well, this stuff happened. The biggest obstacle to the idea of medieval found footage is this. That it took eight hours to produce an image back then. I don't want to say, well, maybe they found a quicker way to do it because that's taking it more into the fantastical. I want to stick with the technology we know they had. They had a magic lantern. (laughs) No, no, not literal. They had a thing called a magic lantern that you'd have a little image. It's basically a side projector back then. The magic lantern was like in the 1500s. It was in the medieval times. In the medieval times, they had this thing called the magic lantern. It was a projector. It was the evolution of the camera obscura. But instead of seeing what was outside, you could have a little piece of glass that was hand-painted And you'd put it in and you'd put a candle in it or sunlight or whatever. And it would project the image on the wall. 
just like a slide projector. And then people said, you know what? Let's put two slides in it. And you could show like a little cartoon guy juggling. So the basics of the technology were there. Projection, glass slides, animation to a degree. You would definitely see the black switch there as the machine slowly clicked over. But this technology was in wide use. So the only thing we have to add to have medieval found footage is the real people. They have the slides of the two people juggling or whatever they want to do. The two little cartoon people dancing. But for found footage, I want footage of people. Is it possible that there was film footage of people in the medieval times? Again, the biggest obstacle to it is people having to stand still for eight hours. But that's why I use the king example. Because you're a peasant. You're, you're going to get your head chopped off if you don't stand in the same spot for eight hours. And then you just move slightly for the next one. And move slightly for the next one. And move slightly for the next one. It would take, you know, a month to have a good five minutes of footage. And, you know, you figure hey, maybe they're sitting down in chairs. But it's not an insurmountable hurdle to have someone sit in a chair for eight hours. And then after that, move their arm slightly. And, move, and it would be a... Vo- it would, imagine going to a king's house and he's like, You know, have you ever heard of a witch? And his guests are like, well, of course, witches are real. They, 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 we had to, like, kill 12 of them getting here. And the king goes, have you ever heard of the Blair Witch? And then he has this found footage movie. Well, it's not found to him. He owns it. He made it. But imagine going to a royal court and people being like, oh, look at my magic lantern. It's two images of this cartoon guy juggling. And the king's like, that sucks. Here's Transformers 4. It took me eight years to film, but I did it. It is possible. Even using the technology, the only thing that's not possible is you have to go along with me on the journey that the technology got a little more advanced between 1500 and 1827 regarding that chemical process. And the fact that we can, I can say, here's another chemical process that was not mentioned for 200 years. People were doing it in that time period, but it wasn't mentioned for 200 years. I think there is medieval found footage. I think that it is very likely that some archaeologists found this stuff. Why it wasn't released? I don't know. Now, I want to put money... I think it's likely, but I want to put money on it. But it may be out there. There may be footage of the real Blair Witch. There, it is a documentary. It was an actual witch they were chasing around. King standing in the corner of the castle at the end. Camera falls, breaks, it's over. I think the idea of medieval found footage is very intriguing. And I, it's one of those conspiracy theories that I actually really like. Because it's a good one. It's a happy conspiracy theory. It's we are more advanced than we think we are. We're more clever as a species than we think we are. That 300, 400 years before the official invention of something, someone came up with it, used it for entertainment for documentation, whatever. There's not a lot of positive conspiracy theories out there. But one of them that we're actually smarter than we give ourselves credit for, that's a good conspiracy theory. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.